Hi, I'm David Joseph Martinez, and this is The Brilliant Actor. And it's not just The Brilliant Actor, it's really The Brilliant Performer, The Brilliant Dancer, The Brilliant Singer, The Brilliant uh, Stand-Up Comic, The Brilliant Guitarist, The Brilliant Musician. Whatever it is that is your talent, teaching you what it is to shine that light that illuminates in all of us, and it's the energy, the aura that we all have, and it's communicating that aura to get into graduate school, to get into uh, college, to get a scholarship, uh, to get your next gig, uh, to get a brilliant audition so that you can work and um, work doing what you love, which is being a brilliant performer thus the brilliant actor. This is Nick Benetatos. Come on over, Nick. This is Nick Benetatos. He's a young man that, I know he's much taller than me. Yes, thank you. Um, and uh, Nick and I have been working uh, together. He is a undergraduate uh, in uh, his bachelor's. He's actually first year. He's 18 years old and uh, from Miami. And uh, he's a uh, Greek and uh, Puerto Rican, and what else is that? Polish. He's Polish too. And uh, yeah, and very, very remarkable young man who has uh, uh, offered his services to, uh, to show what it is to be a brilliant actor, a brilliant uh, individual, a brilliant human being, which Nick is, is very much an example of. And what we're going to do is, is show a scene that's done uh, whatever technique that you know how to do, and uh, it's Meisner uh, technique where you're sitting in close approximation in practicing a scene before you do it before the camera, before uh, an audience on a stage or in an amphitheater, uh, whatever the, uh, the environment or the uh, location may be that you're going to communicate uh, your gift and uh, your talent, and of course, your light. So, we're starting with, you can grab your sides. We're starting with uh, two different scenes, uh, one of them being uh, from the movie, Now You See Me, a uh, movie that uh, I played in uh, a few years ago, had the uh, fortunate opportunity to work with Martin Freeman and Mark Ruffalo. Uh, and this scene here is between uh, Dylan, who is Mark Ruffalo, uh, which would be played by Nick, and I will play the uh, female role, which is the detective. Uh, she's a federal detective that is investigating the bank robbery that occurred where a uh, million dollars were stolen just out of nowhere, and just uh, these tickets to this show, and this magic show that Jesse Eisenberg and Woody Harrelson and Isla Fisher uh, and, of course, Dave Franco, uh, the brilliant Dave Franco, uh, does some amazing card tricks, uh, are the four horsemen. And she's investigating, and they're down to the wire where she's figuring out who did it and who was the uh, protagonist of everything that happened in the whole movie. And this is the scene. And how we're going to do it, uh, you, sit, you sit down across from one another. And you try to be as close as possible. Uh, you don't have to touch the other individual, but it's just very, very important to have intimate contact. You're just seeing the other person and feeling that energy from the other person, and you're communicating to their eyes. In film, TV, the internet, uh, Netflix, Hulu, uh, TV land, now, any kind of communication that is done through media is done with eyes. Everything is eyes, eyes, eyes. And uh, it's okay to, to look at the mouth because in, in regular conversations, people tend to, when they're really into the other uh, human being, they're actually almost saying the words that, that are pronouncing the words that they're, that's coming out of the, the person's, the individual's mouth, and they're actually mouthing the words at times. So that's completely normal, and it's what 
uh, as human beings we do when we interact with one another and we're really uh, into the other person the other person is is really communicating to uh, them the um, one of the things you know keeping uh, this intimate space keeping the, the sides up close to the individual's face why so that you can look at the lines look at the individual look at the lines give give the communication the line to the other person into their eyes and then just really feeling the words and being with that other person and saying the lines and and that's it nothing more nothing less just being intimate being with that other person the communication is with the person that's in front of you however the the intensity the focus uh, the laser uh, beam is into the eye, to the back of the head, to infinity. And through that, you're going into not only their soul, but into their lifetime. Their life uh, of, of generations of generations of that individual that you're communicating with. Uh, so, this uh, is Now You See Me. And as Alma continues to read... She gradually becomes aware that she is not alone. So she looks up. Dylan, all of a sudden, is sitting in front of her. You know, you're right. The fact that this is real doesn't make it any less magical. Agent Rhodes? Starting when I was 12 years old, I spent every minute of every day planning for and working out every possible variable, every minute iteration in detail. The one thing I didn't count on was you. It's about Shrek. The whole thing, all of it, starting with the bank. Credit Republican, he possessed his house. Forced him to move to the United States. Tresser carried his life insurance. But he didn't pay couldn't find the body. The police didn't even try. Tide shifted. No one wanted to spend taxpayers' money to drag the river, the drag the river for a two-bit magician who arranged his own death. Let's try it from Alma and, and she's saying it was about Shrek. Let's try it from there. Be with me. whole thing, all of it, starting with the bank. Create a Republican repossessed his house, mm. forced him to move to the United States. Tressler carries life insurance. And, but he didn't pay. Because they couldn't find the body. The police didn't even try. The tide shifted. No one wanted to spend taxpayers' money to drag the river for a two-bit magician who arranged his own death. But you did. I spent ten years. I finally found it. An outcome? They manufactured safes before they evolved into a security company. They used cheap iron, cut corners. When it got to the bottom of the river, it warped. It couldn't get out. He was supposed to rise from the water. Can you 
himself. Because you were there. Because he was your father. This is a, a scene from Wall Street, and uh, where Gordon Gecko has taken advantage of millions and millions of people, and just just like Bernie Madoff, just made off of people's money, and just left this poor young man, um, young whippersnapper, sharp kid, just like Nick here. Just somebody just, just raring to go, wanting to make a difference in the world, wanting to get places, wanting to be like Gordon Gecko. And what happens? He totally leaves this poor young man holding the bag and feeling responsible. And so what does Bud, the character, do? He grabs a bottle of uh, tequila, drinks it all up, is drunk out of his mind, and his girlfriend, they share a, a penthouse apartment that overlooks, uh, it's down near Battery City, it's in Battery City, overlooking the Statue of Liberty from their terrace, they have a penthouse of terrace uh, apartment, uh, and on their terrace they can see the Statue of Liberty, they can see 9-11 Memorial, and just coming around toward the back, they can see the Empire State Building, and just beautiful, the rectangular shaped forest, zoo, life of Central Park, and the rest of Manhattan. A dream come true. However, Bud totally loses it. And the place is a wreck. Bud, what's going on? I've been played like a grand piano by the master, Gecko the Great. And today was a big crash. Liquidation sale. I'm going to call Blue Star and the little pieces and sell it all off. I'm so sorry. I was afraid something like this would happen. Talk about being bent over by the sink of life, getting dry humped. I handed it to him on a silver platter. I told my father, those people. Buddy, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. And it's not your decision. I'm not going to let it happen, Derry. Don't cross Gordon. He'll crush you. You worked hard to get where you are. If Gordon doesn't pay Blue Star, someone else will. And who's to say they won't do the same thing? At least I won't be pulling the trigger. Are you mad? Why are you doing this? We're so close. The town is going to be ours. Don't throw it away, bud. I can stay with the brokerage firm. And you're doing fine. You can survive without Gordon Gecko. I'm not looking just to survive. I've been doing that all my life. What the hell is that supposed to mean? That if you Make it any of Gordon 
from the get go. You really mean that? What? He, he promised you. What he promised you? To take the, to take you public. <laughs> I guess without Gordon's money and seal of approval, I'm, I'm not such a hot investment anymore. You're just the best money can buy, Darian. <laughs> you are not exactly pure. You went after Gecko with the same vengeance you went after me. Look in the mirror before I'm you looking. <laughs> and I sure don't like what I see. Fair enough. But it's not that simple, bud. When I was down and I had nothing. It was Gordon who helped me. He got me all my clients. All my clients. You among them. And he can take it away just like that. That when you've had money and lost it, it's worse than ever having it at all. That's bullshit. Step out the door. I'm changing the locks. You can never leave this bud. I really do care for you. I think we could have made a good team. But that's all gone. And that's how it goes. Get the hell out. Get the hell out! So, as a result of um, doing a scene like this, you're able to, to actually communicate to the other. It doesn't matter if you're playing a female or a male or a donkey. Whatever the character, you're being with, being with that person, being with you. Your essence is transmitting into this individual and through in, through to infinity. And just so happens that there's a human being and the fly on the wall and the spider in his cobweb catching what's happening in the scene. And that's it. Being. Simple. Nothing more. Nothing less. Now we're going to... Uh, uh, do this and put it on camera. Why? Because this is rehearsing. This is like getting it. Okay. And this was a cold reading. Uh, Nick, did you have this yesterday or anything like that? Okay. This is what's called a cold reading. Cold readings are done to see how flexible the actor is. How, how much they can actually dance within the scene and be with the world that is just all of a sudden in front of their face and there's just all these words and you have to prepare and develop this milieu, this environment, this world that's called, in Now You See Me, of the world of magic and in this movie, Wall Street, being these two starstruck people that just want to reach their goals and dreams. And they thought that they could do it together. And, but they allowed some big, arrogant, prideful dude, Gordon Gecko, to get in the way. And that's it. One being with the other. 
So we're going to put this, uh, both scenes, I, I'm going to play the same characters, uh, Salma and Darian, and we're going to do it behind the camera, and I'll play the, the role as the casting director, and Nick is going to uh, uh, be auditioning for the role of uh, Bud and Dylan. Okay, so if you could remove these two chairs, please. Okay, now as, as you can see on the floor, you can stand right there. Okay, you have, you have, I, and I actually put this, this is called putting the parameters on, uh, on yourself. You will not get this. That silver thing, absolutely not. The reason why I set this up is that you can put, this allows you, what, however big you are, to be comfortable, relaxed, where you're there in front of the camera and you're showing your light, your essence to that individual that you're speaking with, just as intimate as you were sitting next to another human being. Now you're communicating to someone that the casting director is, may not play it like another actor. Actually, you can bank on, they're not gonna interpret that character the way whatever actor or actress did the scene with you. You have to be able to create the world, create the story, do, just on, on a cold read, be able to utilize your life, your created life, to build your world, and it just happens to include, in infinity, up, infinity down, back, back you, here, and it just so happens to be a camera catching the moment. And an individual that you do not know, you may know or heard of, that may be as intimidating as all get out. But you know what? All cast and directors, and I mean all cast and directors, are there because they want you to get the job. Period. If you get an audition and they say yes, bring Nick Finitatos. We want to see him. It's because they think you can do it. When you get a call back, that cast of director thinks you can do it. And now the director thinks you can do it. And the producer thinks you can do it. And the client, executive producer, thinks you can do it. Everybody is making sure you can handle the role and handle, your, handle yourself before, during, and after the audition. And of course, it starts in the waiting room. And it's not the chit-chatting with other people, catching up with uh, old times, or you know, seeing someone you haven't seen in a long time. It's about you being with you, being with the character, developing that world, stat right now so Nick I'd like for you to uh, do do your your slate okay if you can move that chair for the back please and uh, the parameters are here but you will only have if you could pan down this mark and it may it, it may be smaller than that you have to make sure that you're there at the mark and and you need to ask, how much, how, much, how much room do I have to work? What are my parameters? I, I, I use the term parameters. It's the limitations of how you go. Uh, in this scene, you're going to see in a moment, it's, uh, most auditions are done as a close-up. And sometimes extreme close-ups. But very few times the, uh, the camera is getting either a half shot or a full shot. Nick, if you can go ahead and stand in, please. Okay, now, as you can see, the, um, okay. The cameraman or the casting director will adjust. And as you can see in the, in the monitor there, that um, it's actually, uh, go ahead, and, okay. 
you, you need to go ahead and bring, when you tape on yourself, tape by yourself, you need to center the individual within the camera, putting them in the center. And if you see the small box there, the white box that's tracking uh, his face, and lock everything down. And uh, Nick, just to let you know, this is your parameters. You basically have uh, move over to uh, your right a little bit. That's as far as you can go. To your left, a little bit more. Right there, that's it. That's your parameters. Okay, basically, if you can pan down, please, uh, to the, uh, the parameters there. He has just that to work with to tell a story and create the world that you believe in. Okay. Right, Nick. You grab the sides. How you doing, Nick? Hi. Yeah, how you feeling today? Okay. Uh, okay, that's it? Uh, uh, anything happened bad, or are you okay? I'm all right. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, very cool, very cool. Uh, here are the sides that I'd like for you to to read. I know it's a cold reading, but uh, you were highly recommended by your agent. Uh, the first scene is uh, uh, from uh, the movie Now You See Me. The, the character is Dylan, and you'll be playing to me, and I'll play Alma. And I'm a detective from uh, the uh, from Paris and Paris, France, and what just happened before was there was a bank robbery and they stole a million dollars, but they stole it, they left a card to a show, a magic show, that happened in your city. And, and uh, you're investigating as federal officer, FBI, you're fi trying to find out who did this and who, because that money ended up falling on a bunch of audience members that, oh my gosh, it was like this free-for-all. And, and then they, and then the magicians disappeared and you're tracking them down. And uh, you, uh, you got to a point where you're, uh, you've uh, communicated to uh, these people and she's trying to figure out something about you, okay? And uh, any questions about that? No. Okay. And uh, then I'm going to have you go right into uh, the, the next scene, which is uh, Wall Street. And uh, you'll be playing the role as a bud, right? And I'll be playing uh, Darian. And it's a, a boyfriend-girlfriend situation where uh, you just got, had to, yeah, uh, thank you. That you were uh, just caught with your pants down, basically. And you don't know what to do. You're drunk out of your mind. You just drank a bottle of tequila, and here comes your girlfriend that uh, you were a client of hers, and all of a sudden, you know, the, the apartment that she painstakingly designed and, and, and coutured to be absolutely fabulous, terrace overlooking all of Manhattan, and you just trashed the apartment and you have your lights, okay? So I'll grab my sides here. Um, uh, our cameraman is uh, Andrew Lugo, and he'll be uh, taking from there, and I will, uh, when I start the camera, I will point you to, to start, and if you could direct all of the dialogue to me, okay? And if you could, uh, uh, slate first. Straight to the camera. Let's see, I'm just going to adjust a little bit. Okay. Hello, my name is Nicholas Benetanos. As Bud, I am six foot two, 220 pounds. Do you have an agent? I am not represented. Okay, but you're looking for one as soon as possible. Yes. Awesome. Very good, sir. Okay. Bud! What's going on? 
I'm sorry, I messed up. I'm sorry, I put the slides down. Okay. Uh, cast directors do that, and just you you dance with the with the situation. Don't let it uh, throw you off. Okay. My apologies. We're we're doing this other one first. Okay. And just read to me. All right. Whenever you're ready. You know you're right. The fact that this is real uh, doesn't make it any less magical. Even Rhodes? Starting when I was 12 years old, I spent every minute of every day planning for any possible variable, every minute iteration in detail. The one thing I didn't count on was you. It was about Shrek. The whole thing. All of it. Starting with the bank. Create a Republican, repossess this house. Forced him to move to the United States. Tressler carried his life insurance. But he didn't pay. So they couldn't find the body. Police didn't even try. Tide shifted. No one wanted to spend taxpayer dollars to drag the river for a two-bit magician to arrange his own death. And you did. I spent ten years. I finally found it. An alcorn? Manufactured safes before they evolved into security companies. But they used cheap iron. They cut corners. When you got to the bottom of the river, it warped. You couldn't get out. You were supposed to rise from the water. You saw. Because you were there. Because he was your father. Yeah. Thank you, Nick. So what ends up happening, um, thank you very much. Uh, they, they say thank you, and sometimes it's, go ahead and turn it right here, folks. Uh, sometimes it's like, thank you, you know? hey, great job. Don't listen. Listen to your heart on where you are. If you feel you have given everything you got, 150%, 100% out there, and 50% to the cosmos, then all you can do is all you can do, and all you can do is enough. And enough is enough. And then you just leave it to the cosmos. You leave it to the cards. You say thank you, and uh, if there's anything else, you don't rush off, you don't, oh, that much, oh. you say thank you, and you go on to the next thing. Don't worry about it. There'll be other jobs. If you don't book, it doesn't mean you're a bad actor. If you feel, which I, I, I know Nick feels he, he did the best that he could do. Now, you will always think, oh my gosh, I could have done this, I could have done that, I could have done this, I could have done that. Yeah, you could have. But that's after the fact, and it's in the past. The past in the past, and, and move on to the future. Because your future is what? Bright. Why? Because you are this brilliant instrument of life that was fearfully and wonderfully made to make amazing things happen. 
and the molecules in the room will shift because of your presence, whether you book or not. They may think, man, you know, he was really, really good, man, gosh. But you know, I, I, he's just, whatever. He doesn't fit this particular role. But hey, he could be good for this other role. He could be good for another project that I'm working on that uh, we're having casting just next week or in two weeks, where I'm going to keep him in my personal files. And yes, casting directors have their personal files. They have their people that they can depend on. Why? Because these people have proven themselves to not only be courteous, be professional, be early to, to the audition, be early to their job. They do their job if they book, they do the job, they keep their head down, they, they only interact when they're uh, spoken to, you do the job, they thank you, it was an honor to, to work with you or whatever, uh, and, and not to like the star or anything, just whatever, just in general or even to yourself. This was awesome, this was great, thank you for the opportunity and move on to the next thing because if you've done your job, they will think, oh my gosh, this guy's brilliant. He's, he's like amazing. We gotta use him again. Oh my gosh, I'm doing this other project. That's, it's like next year, but I'm still developing it, but this guy would be awesome for that role. And that's what's there for you. You just have to trust the cosmos, the energy, who you are as that brilliant performer, as that brilliant actor, as that brilliant dancer, as that brilliant musician, as that brilliant stand-up comic. Whatever it is, that public speaker, you, anytime you're communicating to a camera, to a media, it's to share your heart, your essence, and speak your truth. Tell your story, let them decide what they want to do with it. This is uh, the uh, last portion. This is actually, uh, we had two workshops today. Uh, the earlier one was from 10 to 1. Uh, we worked with the 14 to 17 year olds. And no, I didn't want to show any video for them because, of course, these are uh, children under the age of uh, 18. Uh, Nick has, has uh, offered to, uh, to be a part of this, uh, showing the young adults, which are the 18 to 25 year olds, uh, in our uh, session that we uh, just had and uh, we're sharing that with you. Thank you so much for being a part of this. All the proceeds to this, I'm not making a dime out of all of it. The, uh, the company that I'm working for, I'm a voice teacher, I, I teach voice, singing voice, uh, speaking voice, I, I teach also uh, accordion and dola. I speak, you know, accordion and, and also trombone. Uh, and uh, I also sing, uh, can, I teach people how to present themselves and be brilliant on camera. And uh, thank you so much. It's the proceeds that that will be coming in is to uh, this course that I told you about before in the earlier videos called Choral Connection. It will be sponsored by my nonprofit organization that I started when I was 15 years old uh, in high school at Hialeah Miami Lakes High School. Uh, called uh, S-O-L-V-E, Solve, it meant to seek, observe, learn, volunteer, and educate. And that is something that I'm very strong about. It is a worldwide organization now to uh, seek out uh, what's wrong in relations in the world and governments and politics and why there's sexual strife, uh, ethnic strife. Observe it, don't be involved in it, learn about it, talk to people, dialogue, and then get specialists who volunteer their time to bring resolution to whatever it is. Earthquake in Peru, we were there in, in 2007, uh, and uh, also uh, in doing this course called Choral Connection, Music for the Soul, Soul for the Music. And using that voluntary time of your, of your skills to educate other people what and how to bring resolution or an answer to whatever situation is happening. 
Thank you so much. You have an amazing day. And thank you. My name is David Joseph Martinez. This is Nick Benetatos. And um, this is, oh, you don't want to show, okay. This is Andrew. He's uh, very shy, but it's Andrew Lugo. We happen to be Puerto Rican, all of us. It's kind of funny. But uh, hey, Boricua, thank you so much. Have an amazing day. Thank you.